If it were up to me, we would expel Ilhan Omar and deport her out of the United States. Maybe she wouldn't be so loud all the time. Maybe she wouldn't be getting threats. So I guess Republicans are just done trying to hide the fact that they're racist. In fact, some of them are just openly admitting that they're racist. Case in point. If I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Well, well, that's the you wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have. You no, wouldn't have done that not, before. That's not an immediate. No, you wouldn't that's have done that before. That's not who I am. That's no. not what I believe. It is the reality the left has but created. I, I, By the way, he subsequently doubled down and then tripled down, and every single conservative commentator who saw his comments defended him. But I mean, you would expect elected Republicans, I guess, to at least try to hide the ball a little bit more. But that's not the case. And this week, Republicans went full mask off. If you could even say that they've gone full mask off, because that implies that they haven't already done that. But, you know, for lack of a better term, they went mask off in their attacks against two black members of Congress, two Congresswomen, Ilhan Omar and Cori Bush. So let's talk about Ilhan Omar first and what prompted this attack. So a conservative account on Twitter, Marina Medvin, shared a video of Ilhan Omar telling Somalians she's Somalian first, Muslim second, and no, America wasn't even mentioned. And then she adds, oh, and she says that her primary job in Congress is to protect Somali interests. And in the video, there is another moment that drew the ire of conservatives where she's quoted as saying the U.S. government will only do what Somalians in the U.S. tell them to do. Now, predictably, conservatives had a meltdown over what they thought she said, and they apparently felt entitled to be as racist as possible towards her because they interpreted her remarks as treasonous. For example, House Majority Whip Tom Emmer called on her to resign, saying Ilhan Omar's appalling Somalia first comments are a slap in the face to the Minnesotan she was elected to serve and a direct violation of her oath of office. She should resign in disgrace. But failed presidential candidate Ron DeSantis took it even further and called for her to be expelled from Congress, denaturalized and deported. And yesterday, Marjorie Greene introduced a resolution to censure her for her treasonous comments. But take a look at how she introduced this resolution. Censuring Representative Ilhan Omar of Somalia, I mean, Minnesota. So clever. Now, she later explained in a video that if it were up to her, she'd be deporting her too. Censure is not going far enough. If it were up to me, we would expel Ilhan Omar and deport her out of the United States. Her comments are outrageous. She's acting as a foreign agent within our very government. She said the U.S. government will only do what Somalians in the U.S. tell them to do. They will do what we want and nothing else. They must follow our orders and that is how we will safeguard the interest of Somalia. She also said, for as long as I am in Congress, Somalia will never be in danger. Its waters will not be stolen by Ethiopia or others. Sleep in comfort knowing I am here to protect the interest of Somalia from inside the U.S. system. Ilhan Omar needs to be censured. But censure is not enough. I'm telling you right now, she is acting as a foreign agent on behalf of a foreign country. Our country is going to be taken over from the inside. For as long as this continues and we allow people to serve in our government, acting as foreign agents on the in, on the the for the interest and for the good of foreign countries and foreign peoples, our country is not safe. Ilhan Omar, needs to be censured. I urge my colleagues to vote to censure her, but I also urge my colleagues that we need to join together to stop foreign agents serving in our government in the interest of foreign countries. We serve the United States of America, and that's it. We serve the American people and no other people. Is that so? Well, I find it interesting that she has nothing to say about APAC, a group that lobbies specifically on the behalf of Israel's neoconservative interests. Why are we allowing this organization that is exclusively dedicated to one other country's foreign policy to bankroll politicians and Republican politicians? And why isn't she outraged about that? 
She also didn't say a thing about Trump's business ties to Saudi Arabia and whether or not that might have influenced his stance towards them and giving them weapons deals and vetoing a resolution that would have ended U.S. complicity in their genocide of Yemen. So, I mean, what's the difference between those instances and this? Well, I think you know the difference. It's skin color. That's the difference. White people can't be disloyal to the United States. Only black and brown people, according to Marjorie Greene. And Marjorie doesn't just think this of Ilhan Omar because she's Somalian. She also accused Rashida Tlaib as well in the same video of doing the bidding of Hamas because, well, she's Palestinian. Rashida Tlaib, she does everything she can to act in the interests of Hamas over in Gaza. She literally voted to allow Hamas terrorists to come into our country. She made that vote along with Cori Bush. Cori Bush is acting in the interest of terrorists. Rashida Tlaib and Cori Bush acting in the interest of terrorists. Yep, that's exactly what she voted for. Rashida Tlaib said, I want to bring Hamas here. That's exactly what I want. Such a deceitful, disingenuous, lying piece of shit. Hey, I wonder if Marjorie Greene is also suspicious of Irish American members of Congress and whether or not they're doing the bidding of Ireland. Mm, something tells me that that's not the case. Now, the problem with this hysteria over Ilhan Omar's comments is that she didn't actually say the things that they think she said. So the video that they all shared originated from an account that purports to be the ambassador at large of Somaliland, and they tagged a bunch of conservatives who tend to be the most vocally racist and xenophobic, like Charlie Kirk and Tucker Carlson. Hmm, I wonder what they're trying to accomplish here by doing that. But the context here is important because, as Minnesota reformer explains, Ilhan Omar spoke about the dispute between Somalia and the breakaway republic Somaliland, which is not recognized by the international community, but recently made a sea access deal with landlocked Ethiopia. So there's a couple of things to keep in mind. First, in the video, she denounced Ethiopia's deal with Somaliland and advocated for a unified Somalia, and the account that shared the video and tagged conservatives very obviously had an interest to make her look as bad as possible, because they're on an opposite side of a territorial dispute. Second of all, in the video, she had to ask for help from the audience with a couple of terms and admitted that her grasp on the Somali language was bad, presumably because she hadn't spoken it in a while. Now, aside from all of those issues, the video itself wasn't translated properly, and this was pointed out by people who understood what was being said. African Studies professor Colin Robinson points out that the interpretation was slanted, and she replied, confirming that this is indeed the case, writing, quote, it's not only slanted, but completely off. I wouldn't expect more from these propagandists, referring to the original account that shared it. I pray for them and for their sanity. No nation state can survive if its states start to get involved in land lease negotiations with other countries without the consent of the federal government. Somalis in Somalia and in the diaspora are united in that effort and I stand in solidarity with them. No amount of harassment and lies will ever change that. So she tried to explain that she didn't say what they're accusing her of saying. And moreover, she's pointing out that the account that they're all sharing purposefully misquoted her to make her look as bad as possible because they have an interest in slandering her. Now, conservatives don't have to take Ilhan Omar's word for it because clearly they don't trust her for reasons, right? But the Minnesota Reformer, a local outlet in Minnesota, spoke with two translators and they confirmed, yeah, She's telling the truth. So when it comes to her supposedly saying that she's Somalian first and Muslim second, Minnesota reporter explains, neither of the reformers translators show she said Somalians first, Muslim second. During the remarks in question, Omar spoke of the unity of the Somali people. Somalis are people who love each other. It's possible that we might sometimes have disagreements, but we are also people who can rely on each other. We are people who are siblings. We are people with courage. We are people who know that they are Somali and Muslim. We are people who support each other so she was mistranslated period and when it comes to her doing the bidding of somalia and pulling all the strings behind the scenes with the u.s government well that was also a mistranslation as well quote when i heard that people who call themselves somali signed an agreement with ethiopia many people reached out to me and said i needed to talk to the u.s government they asked what would the u.s government do my answer was that the u.s government will do what we tell the u.s government to do that is the confidence we need to have as somalis that's far different than what's been attributed to her on social media that the u.s government will only do what somalians in the u.s tell them to do they they will do what we want and nothing else. They must follow our orders. That's not what she said, according to the transcriptions of her remarks. 
So really, this is much ado about nothing. But even after this was explained to hysterical conservatives, well, they still are just choosing to pretend like she's a traitor. And Marjorie Greene introduced the resolution to censure her after it was already clear that she was mistranslated. It's almost like she's doing this on purpose. But Ilhan Omar doesn't really seem to care about Marjorie Taylor Greene, and I think that her response was perfect. Politico reports that she said this, I truly do not care about what that insane woman does. Yeah, and I feel like that is a pretty good policy to have towards Greene in general. But understand something. They already suspected Ilhan Omar of being disloyal because Republicans just don't view immigrants as fellow Americans, even if they're citizens. And we know why that's the case. We know why they took that video and ran with it without even applying the most smallest amount of skepticism or scrutiny, despite the obvious red flags. They did it on purpose. They're racist and they wanted to smear her and they used that as an opportunity to drive even more fear about Ilhan Omar despite the fact that she receives death threats constantly. But Ilhan Omar was not the only black woman attacked by Republicans this week because Cori Bush was as well. And it all stems from news that Cori Bush is being criminally investigated. And in my opinion, there's no merit to the claims being made, but let me give you the details and let you decide for yourself. Jeff Singer of the Daily Cost reports, Missouri Representative Cori Bush on Tuesday confirmed that she's under federal investigation for allegedly misusing campaign funds to pay for security services, allegations she denies. While many details about the Justice Department's probe have not yet been released, Bush indicated in a statement that the investigation at least partially concerns payments her campaign made to her husband, Courtney Merritt. The congresswoman married Merritts, whom she'd previously paid for security work, in February. Her campaign went on to pay Merritts $42,500 during the first nine months of the year for wage expenses and security services. Reports for the final quarter of 2023 are due by Wednesday evening. Federal law, notes Politico, allows candidates to use campaign money to pay family members for security as long as they provide a bona fide service at a fair market value. So the scandal is basically that she's paying her husband, who has experience doing security, and the question is whether or not she paid him above market rate and if she misused campaign funds in paying him with campaign funds. She's not using taxpayer money. She's using campaign funds. Now, look, I'm perfectly fine with this investigation happening because I'm confident that she's going to come out on top and it'll hopefully put an end to this entire saga once and for all, because I'm sure you'll be surprised to find out it's not the first time that she's been accused of impropriety, specifically by Republicans, though. Daily Cost continues, a conservative group filed a complaint last year with the Office of Congressional Ethics, alleging that Bush had violated the law by continuing to employ her husband and claimed that Merritts did not have a private security license in St. Louis. The city makes up a large portion of Bush's first congressional district. The office, however, dismissed the complaint in the fall after concluding that merit service and pay fell within legal parameters. So there's been this ongoing fishing expedition against Cori Bush by Republicans because they just don't seem to like her for some reason. Hmm, I wonder why. Now, at first, they tried to get her husband for not being licensed, and now they are lucky enough to have the Justice Department take up the cause and try to determine whether or not she gave her husband a sweetheart deal and or misused campaign funds by paying him for security. But I think the answer to that is a pretty obvious no if you follow the details, and I'm open to have my mind changed. But I mean, the New York Times explains that she spent more on security than anyone else in the house, and her husband's salary is $60,000 compared to other firms where she's paying them much more for security. Now, if she were paying her husband like $400,000 a year, I would then question whether or not there's some sort of corruption going on there. But she obviously is paying him market rate. But you might be wondering, why is she spending so much money on security in the first place. Isn't that a little bit suspicious? And she explains this via Twitter. Quote, since before I was sworn into office, I have endured relentless threats to my physical safety and life. And she goes on to explain that she's not entitled to security as a member of Congress, so she has to foot the bill herself. Now, what she's saying here is absolutely true, and she's talked about this before she was elected to Congress. Before she got elected, she was a high-profile Black Lives Matter activist who protested in Ferguson. And for years, she's been stalked and harassed. And when she was elected, things got exponentially worse since she then became a target of right-wing harassment campaigns, hence why she has to pay for so much security. But conservative Troy Nels responded to this story by attacking her in the most racist way imaginable. She doesn't even support the police, but the idea to pay her thug uh, money to try to help protect her this and that for what? 
Maybe if she wouldn't be so loud all the time, maybe she wouldn't be getting threats. Are you like, saying she deserves to be threatened? No, what I'm saying is, is that when you're out there talking the way she does, I, I'm surprised that people are probably pretty upset because she's a pretty radical. She's pretty radical. And maybe she should tone it down a little bit. Listen, I think it's fine if you think that the details here are suspicious to you. And maybe she did misuse campaign funds. I don't have that opinion, but I'm open to have my mind changed with evidence. But he's not just saying, man, what she did here is wrong. This is corruption. He called her husband a thug. And he invoked the angry black woman trope before blaming her for the death threats that she's receiving, which are catalyzed in part by Republicans, ironically. And ironically enough, when it comes to her supposed radicalism, he's allowed to let his freak flag fly. But when it comes to Cori Bush, she better shut the fuck up about her really bold ideas. Because remember, Troy Nels is the individual who admitted that the Republican Party's impeachment inquiry into Biden is specifically motivated by helping Trump. He said, Trump 2024, baby, when asked about this. So, I mean, when he said that, did he receive death threats? Even if he did, would anyone then blame him for what he said? Sure, what he said there was bad, and it kind of gives away the game of the GOP. But nobody would be like, oh, well, you deserve death threats for that, right? Meanwhile, Cori Bush is subjected to harassment on the regular for every little thing she does. She can't even fart without making headlines. And, well, she deserves it, apparently, according to Troy Nails. And she hired her thug husband. That's just straight up racism. They're just saying what they want to say now in regards to uh, race. Just attacking black women in Congress because of their race. Not even trying to hide it. Now, he also said that she doesn't even support the police. And that implies that, well, she's not entitled to protection because she supports defunding, defunding the police. But I mean, the police don't protect us. Police serve capital. That's what they're protecting and serving. Now, second of all, defund the police doesn't mean you just get rid of the police. I don't know if Cori Bush is an abolitionist. I'd suspect that she's not, or maybe she has read abolitionist theory. But, I mean, she's saying defund the police, which means you take funds away from bloated police budgets to benefit the community in other ways, right? Social services, mental health, and whatnot. I mean, he knows this. But that criticism of her... It's not just the Republican thing, to be fair. I've heard liberals on supposedly progressive shows say the same thing. It's just bad faith because they know what she means when she says she wants to defund the police because she's explained it extensively as a member of Congress. And you can look to the bills that she's sponsored and co-sponsored. They just want to be purposefully obtuse because they don't like Cori Bush for a variety of reasons. When it comes to Republicans, well... Because she's black, possibly. When it comes to liberals, she's too radical. But in conclusion, Republicans have always been racist, but we're in a weird new social climate where they just feel really comfortable to not even try to funnel their bigotry through dog whistles any longer. They're just saying the quiet part loud now, but I mean, don't you dare call them out on it. Don't you dare say that they're racist, otherwise you're woke and using identity politics. They are despicable, and these people are disgusting, and we have to defeat them as a country if we're ever going to unify. Thank you.